Hello everybody, my name is Russell Youngblood and I'm a senior solution architect here at OutSystems. I've been at OutSystems for just now over seven years, but developing web and mobile applications closer to 30 years. In this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about building progressive web applications with OutSystems Developer Cloud. PWAs, or progressive web applications, are a type of application that's built and deployed so that they can be easily accessed by a desktop or mobile browser. Under the hood, we build PWAs using common web technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you're a developer that's familiar with these technologies, then you don't have to learn a new programming language or a new technology stack. Furthermore, with the OutSystems Developer Cloud, you can leverage low code and create one source file for both PWAs and compiled mobile applications. PWAs are very similar to compiled mobile applications that run on the device. One big advantage is that the user doesn't have to download and install them, but there are some limitations in their ability to access device hardware features. However, PWAs can work offline, send push notifications, and access some of the more common device features, such as the camera, microphone, and location services. With this in mind, you can see how a progressive web application will allow you to create user experiences that are very similar to native mobile applications. Before I show you how to create a PWA in OutSystems, here are some other benefits of building progressive web applications. PWAs are discoverable, which means that they can be found by the typical search engines on the web. They're also responsive, meaning that they should look good on various screen sizes. They're network independent, which means that they can work offline and they can take advantage of the offline storage capabilities. And as I mentioned earlier, they look and feel like a compiled application and they have some of the same features, but there's no installation or app store necessary. And this makes PWAs easier to access. And of course, this leads to increased user engagement. PWAs also support the HTTPS protocol, so they're just as secure as a comparable web application. And finally, they're extremely performant based on the fact that they utilize native web technologies. If you have access to OutSystems ODC, building progressive web applications is really a no-brainer. When you create a mobile application in OutSystems, you can choose to export the app for iOS, Android, or as a progressive web application. OutSystems ODC by default creates a QR code that makes it easy to download and preview your application on any supporting mobile device. ODC automates the creation of the manifest file and the service workers, and there's no need for provisioning files, certificates, or app store distribution. You can launch and preview your application immediately, which I'll demonstrate in just a few minutes. Before I demonstrate the PWA capabilities of OutSystems, let me share a use case that I've been working on. Team Neo is a fictitious sports application, and we've designed a web and a mobile application for the fans. With the web and mobile application, they should be able to interact during the live games, vote on their favorite players, track ticket purchases, and purchase team merchandise with both the mobile and the web application. After careful research and consideration, we've decided to deploy the mobile application as a PWA. This is in hopes that it will increase fan engagement since they won't have to download or install the application. Now, let me show you the mobile application and what it looks like in its current state. So allow me to introduce you very quickly to ODC Studio, the IDE where the developer will be building mobile and web applications in OutSystems. Uh, as a quick overview, I can tell you that on the left-hand side over here, we have all of the widgets that we can drag and drop to the center canvas. And then over on the right-hand side, everything is sectioned off into four different layers. First of all, we have the events and timers. We have the interface layer. Here, as I double click on some of the screens for our application, uh, you can see that once again, everything is very visual in the OutSystems IDE. Uh, for the logic as well, we have client actions and server actions that we can build visually. And then finally, the fourth layer is all about the data. So any data that you're going to be using or that you'll need to be connected to, uh, you can find under the data layer. So at any point in time as you're developing your application, you can publish the application and you should see this button up at the top, uh, a blue button that says open in browser. So we will click on that button and take a look at what our application looks like in the browser. Um, now, 
this is the home screen where you can see that we've been hard at work. We have a button where we can watch live sporting events or follow in real time. Uh, we have one screen that we've built that has team merchandise so we can scroll through the team merchandise and place orders right here on from the mobile device. Uh, another screen shows us team players. We can actually vote on the team player of our choice as we're watching live events. And then we can see the results of those votes and then also uh, scores as we're watching or tracking live events. And then finally, we have one screen that has our ticket to get us in the live game. So that's a few screens that we've put together for this mobile application. And um, you can see here in the emulator that it looks pretty good. But if I wanted to test this uh, as a PWA, you'll also notice that right over here in the lower right hand corner, we do have a QR code that allows us to scan and go ahead and test this on the mobile device. So the good news is that without systems by default, when you're building a mobile application, um, it defaults to PWA as the first option. We can scan this QR code, which I'll do so in just a minute. Uh, but then we can also publish once again as a compiled mobile application by clicking on the mobile app option and then clicking the mobile distribution button in the lower right hand corner now of course if you're going to do that you'll need uh, your provisioning file and your certificate and you'll need to be ready to go to the app store however that is not the purpose of this demonstration what we're going to do is actually test this on a mobile device as a progressive web application so this QR code makes it very, very easy to preview this application on my device. And you can see that I've launched uh, Air Server. I'm gonna go ahead and scan the QR code. We can launch the application uh, on our device. And then we can begin uh, very quickly to start to test out the screens that we've created on the device. Now, um, everything looks pretty good. We can begin to navigate through the different screens and go ahead and test what we've built on our local device. And things look pretty good. However, we don't really have um, any type of interaction with device capability. So to really test this PWA, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some functionality uh, so that I can access the camera on my device. And then we'll be able to uh, take pictures of a live sporting event and those will automatically be uh, updated and then displayed on the home screen. Okay, so before we can add and test that feature, we're gonna go back to the ODC portal and I will scroll down to the Forge. I'm going to go to the OutSystems Forge and do a quick search on the camera plugin. You can see here that it uh, rises to the top because I have already downloaded it and installed it so that I can utilize it in my ODC work environment. Uh, switching back over to uh, ODC, the IDE, ODC Studio, I can very quickly check to see that this plugin is installed by opening, opening the public elements window. I can use this drop down very quickly and I can find the camera plugin and make sure that all of the different elements that I need are checked, right? So there's quite a few things here that we're gonna need, but particularly uh, a couple of actions, take picture, and then we're also going to use an action here uh, to make sure that the camera plugin is um, working and that it is functional on the camera. So being sure that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and close the window. I can go back over to the logic tab and I can take a look here. We've got a couple of actions here that I just mentioned, right? The check camera plugin and the take picture. So now we can go ahead and start to add what we need to make this work. I'm going to drag an icon uh, from the toolbar up to the upper right of the main screen. And then I'll do a quick search for a camera icon. So I can find that very quickly um, and then I'll need to go ahead and link that. And I'm gonna go ahead and link that to an action that I've already created. That action is named snap on click and active. So I will go ahead and redirect it to that action. Uh, I'm gonna change the name because we are going to build all of the functionality here within this one action. So to finish this up, we'll go to the logic layer and here we can see the camera plugin. Uh, the first object that we're going to drag to the flow is the check camera plugin. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a condition here to check and make sure that that uh, camera plugin is available, right? So I'm gonna need to go ahead and swap the connectors here and make sure that this statement is checking to see if that camera plugin is available. So that looks good. If so, we'll go ahead and continue on with the action. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and drag and drop the take picture object out here to the action flow. And then finally, we need to go ahead and assign a, 
uh, some some values to a couple of variables. So the first variable will be the actual information that's coming from the camera plugin, right? The media result will go ahead and set the value to that variable. The second variable is simply a Boolean value. I'm going to go ahead and set that to true. And that's a little piece of logic that's going to uh, check to see if there is an image and then go ahead and display that on the home screen. So when that is finished, I can go ahead and click the publish button. We will publish the changes that we've made and now we can go back and test the PWA and see if this camera feature is actually working. Okay, now that we've published, we can go ahead and check the QR code again, test this on our mobile device, and you can see there is a camera icon in the upper right. So we'll go ahead and click on that camera icon. We'll test it out, take a photo using our camera with the application. And once we select that photo, it should upload the photo and bring it to the home page of the application. So at this point in time, we know that we have a, a functional progressive web application and it is utilizing some of the native capabilities of the device that we're using, which in this case is an iPhone 16. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you'd like some more information about OutSystems, just simply go to OutSystems.com or send us a line and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.